Welcome to a new video for the channel and a brand new adventure. Honda ATCs. They're growing in popularity among the collectors. So I thought I would try my hand at a restoration. At least, at least I will start and see how far I get. But I'll probably be able to get this thing looking good so what it is is it's a 1983 or 84 honda 200 s and of course typically they are beat really beat and you just don't know where to start um the levers are all broken so, you know, it had no brake. And around the ranch, they didn't care. <laughs> they just kept riding it. And uh, they actually rode it with complete, completely gone bearings. I don't know if you can see it down there. It's completely gone. I mean, I don't know what's left in there. Probably the race. But you can see how this has all been mushroomed out. And they kept riding it. And so this is 1984. Now it's still got some of the stickers on it. Which is a good thing. And the tank is not really too bad. But what's really nice, just the first looks I'm getting at it, is this tank is like really, really nice inside. Now, and we still have the warning sticker on the tank there. Now, I believe this is an aftermarket, but it's a Honda aftermarket rear rack and they were pretty cool you could lift these little rubber snubbers and lift up that part of the rack so you could access your toolbox and that's what was in it some sort of a jumper maybe for irrigation or something the levers that are broken. I don't know what all this paper is. A hose. But the pull start handle. And there's actually one that's, you know, okay, I guess. I will clean it up and use it for my initial startup, I always like to get to a point where I know if the mechanical and if the engine's going to run, the transmission's going to shift. If all that's good, then I'll go ahead and start tearing it apart. Otherwise, I'm going to see what maybe a replacement engine would run or perhaps see what, uh, you know, whatever the problem may be what those parts run before I go crazy and get buried in one of these and it and turn it into a parts bike. So I bought along with this a 185S and this was the smaller model but they share a lot of components. I almost believe that the front forks are the same, the brakes are the same. When I was selling these at Reno Honda, um, you would put your foot, you'd put your foot here and your knee on the seat, and you'd have to put out about 15 or 20 of these out on display on the front sidewalk from in the back shop every morning. So we got quite good at wheeling these three wheelers. I could have the three wheeler. I could wheelie it all the way out to the curb. 
And how you did that was you'd, like I said, you'd put your, you'd put your foot in there like a stirrup with your knee here and one, your left foot down here on the foot peg. Then you just pull up and gas it. And because you had hand brakes, you could control the wheelie with the hand brakes and you could ride a wheelie endlessly. I mean, we rode wheelies all over the dealership. So the 185 and the 200, like I said, they share a lot of stuff, but what they also share is a lot of misuse and deferred maintenance, I should say. So I'm gonna to have to do the same thing with this one. Now, one thing that I, I do like to see is all of this oil, because they never cleaned it, they used to ship these things with Cosmoline on them. That's what they called it. Uh, and it's like an oil that they would ship them from Japan. And they would, it, would, it would be sprayed all over the bike, basically. And that would keep it from rusting in the shipping container. So you would mix up some high-strength degreaser, spray it on there, let it sit, and then you'd spray it all off. It would all come off when you were putting these together brand new. But this is doing the same thing. This fine film of oil that I'm seeing all over here has probably preserved the shiny silver motor. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the front forks on these, that's what makes them an S for sport, I guess. And it has a little bit of movement and travel on the front end where all the other ATCs um, before this did not have any suspension other than the tires. And again, you know, levers broken. The switch seems to be okay. Who knows if it even, if it's even hooked up. Um, there's something missing here. There's you know, a lot of little things. If I can get that to go back down. And the tank on this one is actually really good too. But it does have just a hair bit of rust in it. But nothing that I'm going to think about sealing. I really think I'm lucky with these tanks. I think I got really lucky. Let's just see if my luck continues. So... The first thing we're doing is we're taking the pull starters because they are always messed up. And the word from the rancher was that the kids, after they got, after the rancher stopped using these because they ended up getting a four-wheeler, they let the kids ride them. And they rode them, they said, until the pull starters stopped working or got all narfed up and rope pulled out of it. So it's a little bit of a extra difficult pull starter because it has a decompression lever in it. But we're going to see how that is all going to pan out. And I'm going to show you what the parts look like on one of these pull starters all cleaned up. So this one, for some reason, this was melted. It should have just been a little ridge that ran along here, but it got melted. I don't know how. And it was obvious that someone had been into these more than once. So this is the 200. I cleaned it all up, and it was missing all of the dogs, they call them, which are little round deals with arms, and they engage when you start to pull on the pull cord, they'll engage and then uh, turn the flywheel. So all the springs were missing. The good things is the spring is intact and it's not broken on the ends, which usually that's what happens 
these little tabs get broken. And all the other things that you have in this, this little rubber snubber, you can't find them new. I'm going to try. I've looked. You've got uh, a couple of C-clips, which I might replace. A couple of copper washers. So this is one all cleaned up. And then this is the 185 that I just took apart. Now, it has the little dogs and their little springs. So I think I might be able to make one out of two of these with some new rope. But you can see, I'll bring this over and show you. That's what it should look like. But it got melted. Now I'm not sure if that's going to affect it. I'm going to clean both of them up and I might even just put the melted one in and see if it operates. It might not make a difference. So that is what we'll do. We'll clean all these parts up and then we'll put this pull starter back together to start this ATC adventure. All right, I got everything cleaned up. Got them all laid out here. And I put a little bit of grease on the areas that they're metal to metal. I also put a little bit of a light coat of grease on this. And it's basically this little spring here. That's a, and I'm going to put a light film. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a light film on this and a light film on this. And it's just to keep it from rusting. The spring is in. There's plenty of voodoo or uh, voodoo. There's plenty of YouTube videos on how to rebuild this. So I'm going to kind of go through quick. One thing I did find is that this size right here. I can tell you is a metric or a Japanese size of rope because your selection here in the States, this is a little bit too big. This is a little bit too small. You can almost tell that's a little smaller and that that's a little bit bigger. Oh, excuse me. That's a little bit bigger. So. I'm going to go with the smaller. I think it'll work fine. But when you get the OEM Honda, it'll be the right diameter and the right length, which is four feet, about four feet. And now I've got the spring tension on. About three or four rounds. You got to have quite a bit of spring tension here because you've got the decompression ring and its spring to overcome also. And I've got the little dogs in here and those little clips. And this is what it should look like when you pull on it. You see those little dogs right here, here and here. They reach, they get to a certain point and then they come out and then they retreat. Now I'm going to lube the cable, hopefully till I get lube coming out the other end of the cable, get it all nice and loose. That didn't take much. So now, get the cable nice and loose. Now this, this right here had a strip screw and it's the same, it's the same screw on both these bikes. So whoever was into these didn't have a pretty good Phillips head. They stripped them out, you know, just trying to get this off. And it's frozen. Probably it's corroded inside. So I'm drilling the head off. I'm going to put a new screw on. And uh, I'm going to want 
I'm going to want to be able to pull this cable or, or anyone in the future to be able to just take the screw off instead of having to take the whole bracket off. So I've got the head. I drilled off the head, which allowed me to get the bracket off. Now it's free. And believe it or not, this these threads, look at this, it just it's just gonna back out. Sometimes they can give you a hassle. So I thought these were gold anodized. And if you look at it, doesn't that look gold anodized? It's not. It's just where I got these in California, they have red dirt. This is zinc plated with probably a little blue chromate. So i am got these all cleaned up. I've got a new screw, which is going to look a little odd in there. And if, depending on how this all goes, I may pull this all back off and replate these pieces so they look just like this blue chromate zinc plated screw. And I'm taking the time to detail this cable just in case I don't have to take it back off. So it's all back together. And when you pull it, you're going to see, let me put this up a little bit further. You're going to see the decompression and then you pull it. But look at this. Look at that slack. I need two more turns. So I got to pull it all apart again, but I'll get that done and get right back. So there we go. Full return. Now the only thing is, is there may not be enough cord. I looked online, they said four feet, but five might've been. So I'm checking for spark, which we, we have so that's working properly and we're getting spark so I have probably got this plug in a in a new box so let's just now that I'm confirmed we have spark I'm going to confirm we have fuel but I know this carburetor is just going to be completely toast. You know, it's been in there forever. So I am probably going to just shoot a little brake cleaner in through the air cleaner. But I wanted to show you the some of these little things are really important when you're restoring. This to me looks like all this routing and this, this nice bend here. This is all original and that's a good thing because you're not hunting down pieces. Even though I probably will take some of this stuff off, I'm going to have plenty of pictures to show exactly how to get it back on. Uh, just having the air cleaner cover sometimes with all those you know, some thumb screws there, or whatever you call them, wing nuts. Just little things like that. I mean, this has the tool kit. That's the good thing. Now, the bad thing is that it was completely out of oil, or really low on oil. But it sat forever, and, and this is the amount of leak I've had from just being in here for a day and a half. So, something tells me that it had oil, but it just leaked it all out. And it looks like it's coming from the drain plug. You know, where where do most people go to when they're servicing their bikes themselves? Well, the most that they usually will do is an oil change. And that's probably what they did. And who knows if they messed it up or not. So we'll see. But now let's get uh, the air cleaner off and see if we can coerce this to pop. After a lot of trial and error compression testing valve adjusting 
the intake valve was tight. So I had a compression of around 80 pounds. And then I adjusted the valves and it jumped up to 120. I think even 130. So being that they've sat a long time, they, you know, I'm probably not going to get much more than that till it starts. It kind of cleans out the valve seats and so forth. But look at this thing. This is all FUBAR. And I noticed that. That's the, that's the advance. You can feel it wanting to advance. But it'll move. So something tells me I've got something messed up in here. Because if you go over to the 185, it's solid. There's the advance. And it's not able to move one way or the other. It's solid on there. I can't imagine that this thing would be floating in any sense like it is right now on the 200. So that's where I'm headed is to try and figure out what is going on here. And now it, it's just, it's too loose for me. Something's screwed up. I mean, that's the advance. I think there's a little set pin inside here that aligns this whole thing up on the cam. That's not loose. So ah, I need to take it apart. And from what I understand, you can drop into the engine the little pin. And so I am going to do my best not to do that. I found the culprit, probably just a defect, which is good, which means this thing probably got shelved a lot earlier than it would normally be. But this right here is the rotor for the CDI ignition. And this one is the old one. And this is rotating. I can't spin it by hand, but if if this was mounted, you could actually turn this and the center shaft just stayed. And it's splined. You can see the splines in here, but it's probably just stripped out. And I have no idea why that would happen other than just a defect. And it didn't look like there was anyone in here. Um, so let's see what happens. We'll put a little starter fluid in it. Give her a couple of tugs. She fires. Well, that's great. So, I've got other issues with just age. I'm going to show you what that is. But that's the big thing, just to get it to fire. Now, it fires with starting fluid. And I tried a little bit of brake cleaner, but I don't know if I can get it to spin over fast enough for the brake cleaner or if the, sometimes brake cleaner works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe someone can tell me. So I have the carburetor off and I don't believe it's ever been off and all that is good stuff. I mean it. Yeah, I love that. These are all original drain lines. Even the fuel line is original. And that just gives me more indications that this thing will really come out nice and will really be a, a nice collectible. So if you look at this, it's all broken, and this is a rubber seal. It actually presses onto the intake port, and the carb's mounted to it. And supposedly, 
just the seal, this rubber seal. I'm going to look at the parts schematic, but something tells me that that's all it is. It's just a it, the air cleaner uh, air box puts enough pressure on the this rubber boot to create a seal for the carburetor. So I'm going to look at the schematic. Well, I was wrong. There it is right there. And now if you go to the bike, you can see where it's just broken in half. There the nut, that's the nut on the bottom and then the other one on the other side. So it just, the rubber just gave way and isn't sealing. So it broke in half, so I gotta order one. So the only thing keeping me from actually starting this is cleaning up the carburetor. Now, as you can see, these screws, nobody's been in here. That's really a good sign. I've got this brass bushing. And it decided it wanted to come out of the carb body. So I'll press that back in. It'll be fine. And I'm going to save the original drain line. I'm going to put a heat gun on this. I'm going to get this... Uh, hose clamp here off slide it off and I'm going to heat this up to get it off I don't want to mess this up at all some of these parts I'm having a real hard time finding so let's break this carburetor down all right I suspected that nobody's been in this and I can kind of tell at least not many people have been in it but this is the factory glue that I'm seeing on this float bowl gasket. And this is just too original. All these pieces here. I really don't believe anybody's been in this. The main needle is not frozen, which most of my bikes, they're completely frozen. So I should be able to clean it up polish up the seating surface. I'm going to get a gasket kit from Rocky Mountain and we'll rebuild this. I'm going to soak this. I am going to uh, drop this into the Berryman's because it's just so old. I want to get everything out of it. So let's get it apart and get it in the dip. Got it all taken down except for the choke. And I'm just doing this so I know how to get it back together. This is probably <clears throat> in as original shape as the 200 but possibly even a little bit more original. So what I like to look for is things like this that's still intact. This chain guard's never been off. Now that means maybe the chain's outside of its limits, which is okay. But just having nuts and bolts that are all factory never been messed with even the two screws here on the cdi this you know it's never had the valves adjust and that may sound bad to some people it it's not bad i mean to me to have someone into this machine is spells nothing but trouble so basically i think the story that they did give me is that this bike ran great actually both of them ran great until the pull starters broke and then they just stuffed them in the storage shed so i'm going to go ahead and do the valve adjustment check for spark and then pull the carburetor and spray a little go-go juice down the throat of the head and see if it'll pop like the other one Let's get well. What I've got here is 
what I believe happened, just doing some research, is I believe at one point both of these ATCs had their carburetors removed and they were rebuilt or cleaned or whatever you would want to call whatever might have happened. And I believe they put the wrong carburetor on the wrong bike because the numbers for the carburetor, the jet size, everything points to this carburetor being for the 200 and it came out of the 185. So I'm almost positive that that's the case because when you have two bikes and you're rebuilding the carbs or cleaning both of them out and you don't really keep things straight, it's easy to swap one carburetor out because they are literally the same carburetor in a lot of respects. So I'm going to put this back together. Now the question is, are the slides, did they just pull, did they just pull the slides out and then remove the carburetor, which left this slide, I pulled this out of the 185, the slide for the 200 is still, well, it's here, but the cable's still on the bike. So I don't think that really matters. You know, I tried to find a needle number. Now there's numbers on this and they're both the same number except one has an N and one has a C or something behind it. So I I just think if if you figure what people normally do, they're not going to pull the cable. They're just going to pull the slide out, pull the carburetor, clean it, put it back in. So I am going to retain the cable in the bikes as they are and I'm going to swap the carburetors back through. So this is the 200 carburetor. The number's correct. The jet size is correct. It's 100. And this carburetor that this came out of the 200 and it has a 98 main. This has a 100. So you would think that the smaller jet sizes would go into the smaller CC. So We've got a hundred and it calls for a 35, which we'll put in. Got everything cleaned up. I'm going to set the float height and we're good to go. So I've got brand new jets. Here's the 35 for the pilot. I could use the original because I got it really clean and I can see a nice round opening but you've got brand new stuff I always try to put my best foot forward and here's a brand new 100 always like to make sure that even though the package says 100 you never know so 100 it says on the jet one thing to keep in mind I pulled the choke completely apart and did not notice there's a little ball bearing and that thing came out in my my little wash pan which I use some powerful stuff and it was rolling around in there I go what the heck is that and I it it comes out of there it's just a little ball bearing so don't lose that float height is 14 millimeters so there's 13, 9, 80, slash 14, depending on how you hold your tongue. You just measure. Probably not showing you. I'm not sure if it's the top of this float or if it's that little area there. So I'm going to try and figure that out. All right, after looking up in the manual, the float should be 14 millimeters to the top of this float. And there's no adjustment. So if this thing is not on, or I'm gonna say close, 
and it is it's real close it's i mean it it's basically 14 maybe let's see what would it be if it wasn't let's just see how far out it would be to be and i would say it's plus or minus one so let's go to 15 and see if 15 yeah yeah it's like 14.5 so that's close enough for me time to open up the carb kit it's got everything we need in there and then some things will start flying everywhere if you don't watch out don't need that but we do need the float bowl gasket and we're going to start with the fuel the air mixture screw you put the little washer on there put the spring on then the little washer then the little O-ring. And I would put a little, I don't know, tri-flow, anything. Just a little lubricant down the hole. Just because you got rubber there. Get that in seated and it's calling for all right this took a little while to choke took a little while to figure out <clears throat> going through the schematic let me move this stuff so you can really see here okay so the first thing is the washer it goes over this shaft then this goes over the shaft and then you've got your spring clip. There's a little bit of an angle to it. I don't know if you can see it. And that presses on the ball bearing that's in that plastic lever. So when you tighten this down, again, just snug. There's your choke. And it, that ball bearing clicks in those three little holes. And there you have it. And the kit came with some sort of an extra washer. And these look like something you'd have on an accelerator pump that seals up the shaft. But uh, they may go on something on this. I, I haven't gotten it close to the bike yet. Maybe there's something on the bike. Or it could be something on the you know top of the slide or so we'll figure that out so there's the carburetor ready to go so the next step is to put it on the bike and see if the bike will run and uh, if it does then i'm going to ride it around shift it and make sure everything works mechanically. And uh, this is going to make a huge difference. A brand new manifold here. Because if you remember the other one, it was broken off and they just had this carburetor can't remember exactly oh it, it was like this and then this was just pressed against the head I don't know how it would even run but it I guess it did so the nice brand new should seal real well and I've got the large o-ring let's go ahead and pull that out of there
put it in. Oh, it's going to seal so nicely. It looks like I'm going to have to... Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be nice. Looks like I'm going to have to pull a couple of studs here and thread them in. So let's do that next. I put a new spark plug in it and I filled it with gas through, through this inlet here. And so let's see what happens. I'm not sure if the throttle setting is right, so I'm going to open it up just a hair. Adjust the idle so it'll idle, and then I'm going to put the tank back on, hook it up, put a little gas in it so I can ride it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hook up the air cleaner, I just want it to go through the gears. I can handle everything else once it's all clean. I don't want to work on it and, and do the, uh, all the things I'm going to need to do to this until I can get all this dirt and grunge off. But, there's no reason to detail a bike that doesn't run. So now that it runs, on with the uh, test ride. This is something you don't see all the time. This tank is silver and just in amazing condition inside. And I just thought I'd show you how how clean. I don't know how they stored it or how, how they achieved keeping it like this for so long, but it sure helps on the restoration. This seems like a good place to end part one of the Honda ATC 185 and 200S restorations. I'm really happy with the way it ran. I mean, it just ran like they did when I was selling them new. It ran, ran perfectly. Probably a little bit of uh, adjustment on the idle and on the mixture, but I don't want to get into any of that fine tuning until this thing is stellar and absolutely gorgeous and it will get there. So I'm going to go from here. It's going to be a complete strip down to the frame and engine. I'm going to pull the covers. I'm going to, on the chain, I'm going to pull the plastics. We're going to get a list going of parts. And I believe I'm going to keep the original tires because 
how many ATCs are you going to come by that have the original? What do they call them? H track. Let's see if I can get it really in focus here. H track. That's what came on these bikes. This is the the pro the pro A M. And look at the year. Here's the stamp. Here's the stamp. So this was the last number is a three, and something tells me that that's 1983. Well, well, well. So, good time to end this video. Uh, this is probably exactly how they'd like it in Shingletown for the parade. Just looking just like it is with duct tape on the headlight and completely gunked with oil and all sorts of good things so we're gonna assess and go from here because we certainly wouldn't leave it in the condition that Shingletown would like it so until the next video which will be video two I'll see you there